Live from Las Vegas, Nevada, it's The Cube at IBM Edge 2014. Brought to you by IBM. Now here are your hosts, Dave Vellante and Stu Miniman. Welcome back to Las Vegas, everybody. This is theCUBE. theCUBE's our live mobile studio, SiliconANGLE's flagship program. We go out to the events, we extract the signal from the noise. Stu and I are, are pleased to have Stephen Jones here. He's the CTO of Tridatum. Uh, we always love to talk to CTOs. Uh, in particular, we're going to talk about mobile, uh, mobility, uh, and Tridatum. Stephen, welcome to theCUBE. Thank you. So tell us about Tridatum. What do you guys do? You're sort of this hybrid firm, yeah. but uh, take us through what you guys are all about. So we, we, we help our customers rethink the conventional ways of doing things, refine what exists, and then help them to transition to this concept of always on productivity by helping them mobilize not only their workforces, but also their workloads. So I would imagine you're not having to drag people kicking and screaming, right? Doesn't everybody want to go mobile, or is it or is it the case that they don't know how, or maybe, maybe they don't realize they need to do it? Well, the challenge is the cloud, big data, mobile, social, they're all buzzwords. They're not products. <laughs> there are technologies behind them. And from what we're seeing, people don't really care about technologies as much anymore. They're more looking for functionalities, capabilities. So, no, but you're not going to hear somebody ask, can, can I buy mobile from you, or can I buy the cloud from you? It's more of a, what can you do to address the issues that I have from a functionality or capability perspective? And then I don't really care what you use to deliver. Obviously, it's technology, but I'm not really concerned about who it comes from, where it lives, in many cases. Are you seeing, are you discerning patterns or clear patterns for requirements and, and, and ideal outcomes, or is it all over the place? No, I think it's very clear. There are a couple of things to me that are very clear. One, the definition of a user is changing. It's no longer just a person. It's now also the line of business applications. And they all want access to data. And the way they go about getting access to this data in an always on type 24 by 7 productivity manner. Mobility, which is also being redefined, it's not just the device, it's the workloads. So how do I shift this workload here to accommodate X, Y, or Z, or whether it be a disaster or a, a temporary requirement for running reports once a month or whatever the case may be. We're seeing this shift towards more of a, everything tends to be centered around that, but then you have to use the cloud, VDI, analytics comes into play, social, all these different buzzwords that have technologies behind them. Regardless of what's going on, it tends to be centered around that. Um, hardware isn't going away, it's just, nobody really wants to have conversations about servers, storage, whatever. They want to have more conversations about what the server storage applications can do for them. Some people still want to hug it, so you will have on-prem. But a lot of people are trying to move those workloads somewhere else so that they can enable this capability or functionality that they're trying to. All right, so Stephen, I wonder if you could help us unpack that mobility sure. a little bit. So, sure. you know, I, I think, you know, a few years back, you know, VDI was all the buzzword, and mm -hmm. too often that, that kind of monolithic desktop and just making that available other places didn't meet a lot of users. There, there were certain use cases that were great for that. I've heard from a lot of companies that, you know, it's like, I, I just want to enable a mobile workforce. You know, maybe I really need kind of an enterprise version of the app store. Um, can, can you walk us through, you know, what, what, what are you seeing on that trend? Do you guys as a managed service provider help companies build uh, that, that kind of application portfolio for, for the enterprise? Yeah, or, you I know, think, how, would you do, how would you describe it? I think when you look at, when you look at what, what, with respect to your question, there's an internal aspect and then there's an external aspect. 
And from an external standpoint, it begins with securing that device and the data that lives on it, right? So we begin there, which is where the FiberLink Mass 360 piece plays a major role from an IBM perspective. Then people want to either deliver the, the desktop in a virtual manner or the application in a virtual manner. And you're correct in that VDI didn't catch on the way it should have in the past. The primary reason was the cost, the hard cost. We could all justify soft costs, but it was hard to justify the hard cost. But technologies have come along now to where we can deduplicate at a higher level, which now allows us to push more or less down to the, the block I can get far more efficient, so I can now drive down up to 95% of my storage requirements, which means VDI now becomes affordable. So I think you're going to see a, 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 it's going to re-energize because that, that virtualization of the desktop and app is a part of the puzzle. And then the file, the, the concept of a private job, Dropbox. I mean, we now we want to secure the data that lives there, but we also need to share not just what's in the cloud or however that's defined, uh, I will say off-prem, but also connecting to our on-prem or current investments in the NAS infrastructures. How do we now bring them together to deliver this concept of a, of a private Dropbox? I think rounds out the external side. Okay, so if I, if I hear you right, you're saying you know VDI, due to the, the late, latest uh, advances in things like flash and storage efficiency and dedupe, that you know storage might have been holding us back from a cost perspective, but you expect to see some significant growth there. Yes, and let me clarify: not dedupe at the block, dedupe higher up the stack, more in memory. Okay. So it, once I have to send it to storage, if I'm going to dedupe there, it's going to be cost prohibitive anyway. Question from the crowd here, uh, uh, Stu and Stephen. So what, what is a company's greatest struggle in going mo mobile? This is from uh, GP Stu. Um, I think it's twofold. I think the first lies in the confidence with respect to security. Unless, unless you're able to now deliver BYOD or whatever the new acronym, acronym is, unless you're able to deliver in a way where you can subscribe and unsubscribe devices, which now allows me to essentially create containers on these devices that my data lives in. So if a device is lost or you're fired or for whatever reason I need to remove my content, it's secured in my corporate container, which now means um, secure the, the issues, perceived issues with respect to security are now manageable. Secondly, I think ultimately it's about accessing data and the ability to share in a private manner access to this data, either by the user being a person or a user being a line of business application the ability to deliver that is the second biggest inhibitor, I think. So what are you doing at Edge? Why, why IBM Edge? What's your reason for coming so here? I'm a, I'm a, when I looked at uh, launching Tridatum, it was very clear to me that the days of you partnering with multiple people, major vendors, those days are over. You had to pick one. and. It came down to HP and IBM for me. And in my opinion, IBM was less confused than, than HP. And then when I dug deeper, I realized that the, the perception, the, the confusion was most, more based on perception versus reality. I think they're very clear on where they're going with respect to software, enabling the software-defined world that we're moving towards. But with every change comes a lot of confusion. Right. Um, so we selected IBM because I think based on their strategic acquisitions, their development, they're starting to do things them, them, themselves again. Um, in my opinion, IBM was the best uh, choice. So as a result, we participate in, in just about everything IBM does. I'm here doing, I was a part of a panel this morning and I'm doing a couple other things as well. Okay, so it's not so much of a storage angle, it's more of an adjacency with no, mobility think, and bring your own devices. And well, getting... it's all of the above. Yeah. 
I mean, the, the server storage networking, it doesn't go away. Software defined, all it does is help break the barriers, break down the silos, makes it easier for, to, for us to connect things, but they're still interrelated. So you have to be involved in a full so, ecosystem. So do you think we're going to have, look, put your crystal ball out, break, break your crystal yeah. ball, you know, put the telescope on. Do you think we're going to have software-defined silos or will we actually be able to achieve interoperability with all this software-defined means? Yes and yes. Yes so and yes? I think, <laughs> yeah. I think it will be, we have a better chance of getting there. Um, and definitely from a technology standpoint, it's possible. From a political standpoint, maybe not so we'll much. See. We'll see. <laughs> but from a technology standpoint, absolutely. Yeah. So Stephen, you know, one of the biggest challenges I think IT's faced with this whole mobility is kind of the, you know, what the user wants and what, what they're doing with stealth IT, you mentioned like Dropbox and the like, uh, you know, versus what IT can deliver. Yeah. Right. What, are, what are you seeing at the customers you're working with? Is IT stepping up to the plate? Are they actually delivering this or are they telling people still, it's going to take us, you know, six to 12 months to deploy this? You know, what are you seeing in the field? I'm seeing a mixture. I think there's, there's still some IT folks that want to hug and hold and maintain control when the business is asking for them to now transition themselves to become more of an enabler for, right? So deliver to us these service, the IT as a service, which is where I think everybody will go, but obviously for various reasons it's not moving as quick as it should, but it has to get there. So Steve, you're part mobile catalyst, change agent, um, partner, and also part managed service provider. Mm -hmm. What you take in the public cloud, uh, what do you make of things like, you know, Amazon announces VDI for the cloud, you know, workspaces or whatever they call it. Um, where's the public cloud fit into your customer strategies? So from what we're seeing, the cloud is become more, becoming more and more commoditized. And people want choice. And they want, they want choice not just based on the traditional ways of thinking, but they absolutely want choice in terms of the different providers. I don't think on-prem is done. I think they also want choices with respect to data centers that their on-prem, so to speak, assets uh, live, right? Um, so I believe it will function more as an enabler for different workloads, for different um, um, requirements, IT requirements that will be more aligned with the partners or the cloud pro public cloud providers that do those specific things well, because they don't all do all things well. So I, I, I think you'll see more of a brokering of these commodit commoditized public cloud offerings with appropriate alignment of workloads with, with the ones that do those different things well. So you're not telling your clients don't use public cloud infrastructure, you're saying use it as another arrow in the quiver. I, I'm saying it's one of the options. Um, the public cloud is no longer as unsecured as it was once perceived to be. It never really was, but now the perception of the public finds it a little more secured, and I think there's a place for workloads to live there. I think there's a place for private clouds that may not physically live in one of those providers that you mentioned, but it could live on a, on a floor that's not in their building. And then there's a place for workloads that have to live within their building. So building a, a, an ecosystem that enables the appropriate alignment of workloads according to your business objectives is, is where it's at. So let me, let me say that in more of a colloquial way. So <laughs> the, the um, you know, you talk about workloads, the average age of an enterprise application is probably close to 20 years, yeah. right? So that stuff probably doesn't go to the public cloud, but all the cool stuff does. All your mobile apps, all your web scale apps. At some point, don't they overwhelm sort of the amount of value being created? Or is that not the case in your view? I don't think it's the case, because I don't think everything that, that can be mobilized belongs in a public cloud. And there are some people, 
Some do belong in the public cloud, but the decision makers just can't wrap their heads around the fact that it can live in the public. But it's not reasons for security, as you said before. What, what is it? What's, what, why, what's the decision point for a customer to stay on premise with those sort of mobile apps or other apps? I think it's, it's perception of security, not the reality of security. Yeah. One, there's still some people that want to own and have full control. Comfort level. Exactly. Um, besides that, there's, there's, there's really no other No real reason. difference, yeah, okay. Yeah. So, but there, there, is a, there is a reality of uh, flexibility. Uh, by flexibility, I mean in terms of the choices that you have mm -hmm. with security in the public cloud. Yes. Right, it's, here it is. Well, yeah. can I change that? No. Can I change that? Exactly, no. yeah. so for okay. the workloads that require the ability to change that, yeah, yeah, yeah. and the answer then, is no, then it doesn't belong there. But there may be another cloud provider that says yes, you can, so maybe that workload can, can live there. All right, Stephen, we got to leave it there. Thanks very much for coming on theCUBE. It was, uh, it was great to meet you. And Thank I appreciate you your much. time and your perspectives. All, All right, right, keep it right there, everybody. Stu and I will be back with our next guest. We're live from IBM Edge in Las Vegas. This is theCUBE. We'll be right back.